right, so where I decided to begin was just to uh, remove, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the motherboard or the, the main board of the MBSX and separate the cables from the monitor from that board. Uh, so you'll just wanna re remove the two screws that are holding the housing. All right, so once you remove the casing from the uh, monitor, I did unplug a couple of things, the USB um, extension cable and the monitor uh, power wire, which um, was actually, was hooked up right in there, that little, right there, that connector. So that made it a little tight. So, I mean, I had to remove that. I did remove this and it kind of loosened things up afterwards. So now you can actually access the rest of the cables that you need to remove, which this one right here is power that goes directly to the push button. And then there's the uh, inverter cable and the LVDS that's gonna be going to our encoder, the, the LCD encoder. But yeah, once I remove these cables, then I pretty much won't be using this board anymore. So <clears throat> I'd recommend removing the board entirely from the casing. Uh, just to remove this LVDS um, cable to give you a little bit more leverage because it's a little tough and you really don't want to pull it from the wires because you might disconnect something. So it'll give you just a little bit more leverage and access to it before you start uh, trying to remove it. All right, so <clears throat> this is the LCD encoder. I just wanted to show it to you the way it comes out of the package. And uh, it's important to note that there's a couple of things you're not gonna be using because you already have this cable here, this for the inverter, um, and this here is your LVDS connection. So you already have an LVDS cable hooked up to this board. You're gonna take this off. And then you have this whole device here that's hooked up to the um, inverter connection, which is right there you're gonna remove this as well. So you're essentially not gonna even be using this piece of uh, hardware. And you'll have a free cable available whenever you need it in the future. But you're not gonna need this at all because we're gonna connect this directly to here and this right here directly to uh, this right here. But these are the connections that you have on this device. So there's your power, HDMI, DVI, VGA, <laughs> VGA, and I'm guessing this is your uh, audio jack. Uh, not sure what this is. Maybe it's another audio. So before I actually make the connections, which is the inverter that's gonna go here and the um, LVDS uh, here, I wanted to show you a couple things. One, the inverter, there's only one way to make the connection, so you can't make a mistake there because it's not symmetrical, if you can notice that there. That, that little gap that's uh, there that'll slide the connection, the connector in, uh, it's not it's not symmetrical. So you'll you'll only have one way to do that. On the LVDS though, it's it's a perfect rectangle, so you can uh, connect it the uh, the wrong way. But I want to point something out. So on the LVDS connection on the board, you notice how there's this extra white speck of space right here. This white paint, extra paint. That's to give you an indicator of, of where to connect it because on the connector itself, there's a little white dot. So you're gonna align that white dot with this white speck. All right, so now that I've actually made the connections, so there's the inverter that's hooked up to the uh, board and, and there's the, um, the LVDS. Now, the, the last thing that you're gonna need to do is ground it. So this ground wire kind of naturally wants to like sway this way. So I don't like really doing a lot of resistance type things. So I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is just connect this. Um, it's kind of hard to do with one hand, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So right over here in this corner, I'm going to hook it up, you know, like, like so right yeah, yeah, there. So I'll, I'll hook it up there and it does come, this um, this encoder, this board, this whole thing, it did come with a little screw and nut type of deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that to fasten it onto that, that space. All right, so with the um, LCD encoder hooked up, I went ahead and hooked up the, um, the headphone 
or the three and a half millimeter jack to RCA plug into the audio jack. And the RCA is hooked up now to my amp. So if you notice I have my control panel removed. Next thing is to get the uh, speakers, the speaker wires hooked up to the amp. So the left and the right, and make sure that I, I got it correctly. So um, just real quick, this is probably the one thing that's gonna that's gonna change that, that I'm actually gonna be modifying to where it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult to get back to stock. Um, Cause I am gonna remove these wires from this uh, plug and then hook the wires into the, um, into the amp. So uh, this, these little plugs I am gonna remove. So this is the speaker that was hooked up uh, like right in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that. And I'm not soldering too. So that's kind of like the big piece of it too, is that I'm trying to keep this uh, solder free. So I, I marked this as my right speaker. I just put a little bit of blue tape so I, you know, won't forget. And I just wanna make sure I'm right. Yeah, that's my right speaker. But yeah, so the next thing is to get these uh, wires hooked into the, the amplifier. And after that, it's gonna be this part, which is uh, getting all the buttons and stuff plugged into the uh, those encoders, the zero delay USB encoders. But yeah, moving on. All right, so the next thing was just getting the wires from the speakers. Uh, this is right. Oh my God, did I do it right? Yeah, so that's right to right and left to left. So next thing is gonna be the uh, all the buttons. That's gonna take the longest, I'm sure. All right, so one of the things that need to happen is uh, you need to hook up your speaker wires to your amplifier. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I did is I have speaker wires directly soldered into the speaker connections themselves on both sides and there you go and you can actually see that i have the original wire still hooked up to it so that's what i want to talk about is that um, there's a much easier solution than what i did and you just have to use the right connectors and again a, a solder free uh, solution uh, so i wouldn't recommend you doing what i did i mean it, it works and it's still going to be great it works just fine but again it's less trouble if you do it how I'm going to suggest. So since I already butchered those wires, I'm going to show you, um, what you can, what you can do with your stock, uh, speaker setup. So these things come in real handy and I'm going to show you this in another example for the, uh, the power inverter. I think that's what it's called or converter. I don't know. Anyway, uh, these things are called, uh, I think DuPont wires or, breadboard wire jumper wires I'll have a link in the description to my um, part one I'm probably going to use the same links in all the all the videos but these wires come in real handy so I just want to show you what you'll be able to do so this right here is the connector for the uh, marquee but it uses a similar setup uh, that your speaker wires are going to have so at the end of your cable uh your speakers uh it uses these little two two pin connectors that go into your uh the control panel so this is what i cut so i cut this off and i stripped the wires and then i discovered that the wires are too short so i, I went and got speaker wires and i soldered them on and it was just a it's, it was a big big hassle but you don't have to go through all that as long as you just kind of keep it stock so if you keep it stock and you have those, uh, again, these DuPont uh, wires, and it's a it's a pack of like more than you need, uh, but it's cheap. It's like six, seven bucks. So these right here are the, are the wires. See how they have the, the, the little pins? So those go directly into those little sockets. So I'm gonna put the, the red one in like so, and then you'll get the your next one in. There you go. And it fits right in. So what you would do is hook this up to your to your speaker, um, the speaker plug connector, right? And then on the other end, you'll have these, the two wires and you can just kind of slide this directly into your amp. Or if you want to daisy chain a couple to have more length, just 
add another two because they do come in different styles. So like this one has two sided pins, right? But then part of your pack comes where one side is like a male pin and a female plug. So you can do that to kind of extend them, make them longer. So then essentially you would have a longer uh, cable, longer wire, and you'll be able to just hook that up directly into the end. All right, so the next thing is actually hooking up the joystick and buttons to your zero delay uh, USB encoder or USB board, or I forget what it's called, but it's this thing. Um, I have a Sanwa stick, so if you looked at a, another video where I actually modded the sticks and the buttons, I did get a Sanwa uh, joystick. So it has a five pin connector. So on the MVSX, it actually goes out to two two of these four pin connectors that goes onto the MVSX board. But <coughs> the uh, encoder either has little uh, two pin connectors for the up, down, left, right, or another five pin. So you're gonna need to get a five pin to five pin cable so that you can hook up one end into your encoder and the other end goes into your joystick. So that's something I learned kind of late in the in the game uh, when I was doing this. So it kind of took me a while to order the part and then, you know, it come in so that I can continue my work. So, uh, again, I'll include this. If you have a Sanwa 5-pin or a joystick with a 5-pin connector, uh, you're going to need another joystick. I mean, another cable. And they're cheap. I mean, this was like 4 or 5 bucks, and it came in two. You could probably get, I think on Amazon, there's like a set of six. Uh, that you can get for like six, seven bucks. So it's 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 not expensive. It was just for me. It was it was the hassle of having to wait because I wasn't prepared. So again, uh, just another tip. So uh, wiring it up, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you have your joystick that's hooked up, and this might be wrong. Um, I mean, I, I think I put it upside down, but I don't think it really matters. You know, because when you're actually mapping your controls, it's just whatever you know, however you do it. But um, for consistency, I'll probably just go ahead and do the other one this way. I think it's, it was supposed to be the other way around. Uh, there's only one way to hook it up into the board, though. So there is only one way for that. And uh, for here, it, it, you know, it is what it is. And then these are all the buttons. So I did get, um, like, my start, player one, um, the back button, and then the uh, start or the coin is right here. So you can kind of see where those are at right here. So that's like my coin button. Um, I think that's the back button and then and then start, player one start. Now I did kind of map those to what this is saying here. Um, let me see where they at, there. So there's select, SE, and then there's ST. So the coin I, I hooked up under select and then um, start, player one start, I hooked up under uh, ST. And then the back button, which is kind of like the option button. Um, I'm gonna. I hooked up here to K11. Now all the other buttons, though, the six buttons, one, two, three, four, five, six, which are these six buttons here. I just basically plugged them into the beginnings, uh, K1, two, three, four, L1. Now that again, that's irrelevant because when you actually map your buttons, uh, you're just gonna push the button that you want to be A, B, X, Y. L1, R1, etc. So uh, I just plugged them in all here in a line so that they're together. And then the other uh, buttons here <clears throat> on the on this zero delay board for player two, I'm basically just going to hook up the player two start and then the six buttons. So and then of course the controller. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward. And then it's just got a USB uh, cable you hook up and you just connect it to your, to your device. <clears throat> but yeah, the main thing uh, from here that I want to kind of point out is just that if you have a Sanwa stick, it'll it'll uh, you'll need you'll need one of these. Um, if you had, I'm trying to think what you would do if you had um, if you had the uh, your your stock joystick. I believe all you would need are are the cables that are that are, uh, that are hooked up to the um, the controller. You'll just have to probably swap them out for these so that you can use the two pins for your directions. But I don't have the stock, so I can't really give you that example. But I think that your stock controller will just kind of go into the directions here. And, and if you look in the back too, it even, it has uh, like AL, so that's left, 
A R right, A D down, A uh, A U up right. So left, right, down, up, and you just kind of trace that to to the other side to to plug them in. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and wire up uh, player two and then hook it up and get them mapped out.